the year is 2223 AD. The video game developer known as Solidio, internationally recognized as the greatest video game developer in human history, addresses his audience on the 200th anniversary of his legendary game, The Sin. Hey guys, and welcome back for episode 10,450. The game is looking absolutely sick, but before we get to that, I would like to answer a question from one of my viewers. Dwayne Johnson was the best president, asks me, Solidio, how have you been living in the same apartment for 200 years? Well, my young friend, you see, back in my day, things were built to last. I don't even have a replicator. I use a 21st century microwave to cook my frozen vegetables. Well, that's it for this week. As usual, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next week if my heart has not given out by then. Hey guys, and welcome back for episode 15. Game's feeling absolutely sick, but before we get to that, I'd like to talk about absolutely nothing. That's right. I didn't think at all about what I was gonna do for this video this week. You know what I was too busy doing? I was ordering a huge amount of Pizza Hut, eating a shit ton of Cinnabon, smoking copious amounts of marijuana, and jerking off for six hours straight to the finest pornography that the internet has to offer. And no, I'm not a degenerate. I wanna be clear about something. A lot of other game developers out there, have you heard their stories? You know what happens with them, all right? They're grinding themselves to the bone, working 80 hours a week, they burn themselves out, and then they don't know what to do with their lives afterwards. So I'm not gonna let that happen to myself, okay? I'm on the grind every day, I'm working out, I'm disciplined. Stoic, all right? So once in a while, in order to allow myself to relax, to make sure that the burnout doesn't happen to me, I order a shit ton of Pizza Hut, a shit ton of Cinnabons, I smoke a lot of weed, and I jerk off for six hours straight to the finest pornography that the internet has to offer. And unlike a lot of other YouTubers out there and other people on social media, might come to you and lie about what they did over that weekend pretending like they were productive like they put effort into producing a quality video or whatever the fuck they do I'm gonna tell you the truth because I'm a real G I want you to know that I'm always gonna be real with you there's no bullshit here now let's take a look at what kind of dope shit I got going on with the game this week so one of my major accomplishments for this week was adding the tutorial sections of the game here in the first part, you can see that your companion is explaining to you, the dum dum player, that you can use WASD to move and your mouse to look around, and you can also hold the shift button to see further. And now you need to find your way out of this small little maze. There's nothing over here, nothing over there, nothing over there. Oh, but look at that, we can go down here. Let's we'll see what happens. All right, now we're in section two of the tutorial, where the companion now explains to you that you can use your left mouse button to dash to the position that you're looking at, that it uses your energy, and that you can get it back by killing these guys. I added a couple of these guys here so that you can see that in one fell swoop you can slice both of their heads off. And now let's move on to the third part of the tutorial. In the third part, it's explained to you that you can also dash through certain walls in the game. And as you can see, you can't go through the black ones here, but you can go through this one. Now I also set up an enemy on the other side so that the player is forced to learn how to defend themselves when they're exhausted. When I dash through this wall, I'll run out of energy, and I get sliced by this guy. So how do you survive this? Well, you have an attack that you can use one time when you're exhausted, and you just gotta time it right. Let's try it out. Boom. And now we move on. 
Finally, in the last part of the tutorial, it's explained to you that you can use the right mouse button to pick up and use items, and they can be used even when you have no energy. So for a little bit of fun practice in this last section, as you can see, I put a whole bunch of these little simple shuriken items on the ground and a bunch of enemies. I also made it so that these guys will respawn after a couple of seconds so you can screw around for a bit if you want to. So now let's move on to the actual first level of the game. I'll show you a little bit of what the flow looks like so far. It's still a work in progress. I am very excited and happy to announce that I have made my final decisions on the game's narrative structure and all of the major gameplay mechanics, so I'm hoping that from here on out it's all going to be pretty straightforward development, basically just building up the levels, adding enemy types, and so on. So I'm looking forward to sharing more of that with you as we go along. For the most part, there's nothing too special or new here that you haven't seen if you've been watching the previous videos. But you may have noticed that there is at least one difference, which is, what is the deal with these glowing blue walls when you go into rooms? Well, I decided to add basically a kind of force field or barrier whenever you engage in combat in a room, so that it prevents you from escaping the room and it forces you to fight inside of it. I ended up adding this for a variety of reasons. It's a bit of a heavy-handed solution, but after messing around with it for a real long time, it turned out to be the best way of dealing with things. So over in Hotline Miami, you can actually kite enemies out of rooms and bait them over to you, but this isn't that big of a problem because you don't have a huge advantage over the enemies. You still need to have a weapon. Even if you have one, most of the enemies have a gun. They can just shoot you from afar. And even if you have a gun, you need to go through each guy one by one. Whereas in my game, it's geared a little bit more towards being a power fantasy. So you always have access to this ranged dash attack that will hit as many guys as you can reach when you dash through them. And in the early parts of the game, you even kill them in one hit. So unlike in Hotline Miami, being able to kite guys out of the rooms is incredibly cheesy. You can basically just group them together, or line them up, and then take them all out at once. And I really didn't like that, and that was basically the only thing that it added to the game. This game doesn't really have like the stealth elements or the AI awareness and whatnot that Hotline Miami has. And it and it wasn't really part of my vision for this game. I want it to be more of a balls to the walls. You jump into a room and gotta take all the guys out and plan it out beforehand. As for the narrative structure of the game, I don't want to spoil anything too much, and that's probably the one part of the game I'm mostly gonna keep secret until release, but the one thing I will tell you is that the game will have multiple dialogue choices and gameplay choices, all of which will have their own kinds of effects on the outcomes of certain events, and those will show up through various conversations and levels as you move throughout the game. Well, that's it for this week. As usual, thanks for watching. You can support me by checking out my first game or subscribing to this channel or following me on any other social media website where you will also get regular updates on the Samurai game. And I look forward to producing some quality content for you guys next week.